Hi, Martin. Are you busy? I'm free. I was wondering if it's possible to call a private cloud function from a Google Compute Engine instance. Uh, yes, it is. I'll show you how. So, Dina, out of curiosity, why do you want to know about calling a private cloud function? Okay, <laughs> after the big HR outage we had last week, our manager wants us to move the on-prem HR application to the cloud, and she wants us to re-architect it using service-oriented architecture. I'm a little overwhelmed <laughs> over where to start. Um, I have a feeling we'll have to use private cloud functions. Okay, let's think about it. Uh, we have two main challenges. Uh, how do we move the app to the cloud? And then how do we migrate to a service-oriented architecture? Right, but remember, our HR application is written in COBOL. It's not exactly a runtime that cloud providers usually cover. Ah, uh, good point. Um, uh, I know, give me some Mountain Dew and six weeks and I'll rewrite the whole thing in Python. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good idea. We know from the Dora research that applications are more stable and have fewer incidents if we roll out small changes frequently. Six weeks of refactoring and one big push sounds like a recipe for a crash. With that many lines of code, how are you even going to isolate the bugs? And the system won't stand still in the meantime. Ah, uh, good point. Cooler heads prevail. Oh, here's another idea. Uh, what if we load the app as is into a virtual machine and then we peel off services over time that we can put into Google Cloud Functions? Uh, for instance, we could start with the vacation requester. I love that idea. I think it'll work. But we'll have to use private Cloud Functions because we don't want just anyone messing with our vacation requests. Okay, uh, so now I see why you want to know how to get a virtual machine to talk to a private cloud function. All right, so our plan is to migrate the app to a virtual machine and then break out one service to a cloud function. But first we need to validate that the virtual machine is able to call a private cloud function. I say let's test it out with the default hello world function and I can do a curl to the cloud function URL from the virtual machine. Sounds good to me. Okay, I will start by making the cloud function. Uh, okay, here we go. Create. And to be extra special sure, I'm going to set it to require authentication. We'll save that. And to internal traffic only. I want to use internal traffic only to block any external requests, and I want to require authentication to ensure no unauthorized internal apps have access to my service. All right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Looks like your function deployed. Uh, now click it and let's check the trigger link to make sure that it denies our request. Ah, yes. It's blocking my request, so we know that our settings are working. Ah, an error message we wanted to see. Excellent. Uh, so now, uh, let's send it some internal traffic from a virtual machine. Okay, I'll create a new virtual machine. Here we go. Create instance. Um, just leave all these defaults on. Scroll to the bottom. And I'm going to use the default service account. Why does it matter which service account you use? Oh, good question. Um, for the authentication, we need to use a service account that has permission to invoke our function. The default compute service account has this by default if you're also using the default settings on the Google Cloud Function side. Of course, these permissions are all configurable, uh, but we can talk about that another time. Got it. Okay, I'm going to SSH into it and try pinging my function. First, I need my URL. Let's copy this, copy link. And we're gonna do, we're just gonna do a curl call here, curl. Oh, 
It's saying forbidden. 403 error. Ah, right. Uh, don't forget the authorization header. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, so I'm going to run this again. I'm just going to add my authorization error header. It worked! So now you're able to call from a virtual machine in, your, in the same project if you have the authorization header. Now, just to be sure, let's try the same command from your desktop machine. 403. Awesome. We can access the function from inside the virtual machine, but not from the public internet. Wonderful. Uh, how would we do this from inside an application instead of using curl? That's a great question. For service-to-service -service requests, we can either write a direct call to the metadata server, or we can use one of the Google Auth client libraries, which will construct this call for you. The client libraries cover C Sharp, Go, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Amazing. I think we have enough information to make our project proposal. Oh, man. <laughs> I completely forgot about the COBOL. Oh, we better get working on that vacation requester. We're going to need it after this.